The member for Wright is a genius too and will be leaving the chamber under 94A. The member for Hindmarsh has the call. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Speaker, my question is to the Minister for Climate Change and Energy Efficiency, Industry and Innovation. Minister, the carbon price has now been in place for almost four months. We saw a lot of predictions and claims in the lead up to it. Will the minister update the House on its impact, uh, which of the predictions were proven and which ones were not? The Minister for Climate Change and Energy Efficiency has the call. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. And I'd like to thank the member for Hindmarsh uh, for his question. Uh, because, Speaker, it's important to remind the, the House that the Treasury modelling of the impact of the carbon price showed that the price impact would add 0.7 per cent to the CPI in financial year 2012-13. That was the Treasury modelling, and it's been mentioned many times. Now, following the release of the September quarter CPI figures last week, some economists are in fact predicting that the impact will be less than that forecast by the Treasury. For example, the Commonwealth Bank senior economist Michael Blythe said the following, it is looking as if the Treasury's figure will be an overestimate rather than an underestimate. And that's very good news for Australian households, recipients of tax cuts funded by the carbon price, recipients of pension increases funded by the carbon price, recipients of family tax benefits funded by the carbon price. All good news. But of course the most notorious prediction came from the Leader of the Opposition about the price impacts of carbon pricing. He has travelled the country claiming time and time again that there would be unimaginable, unimaginable price rises, and you name it, just think of any commodity, meat pies, sausage rolls, tomato sauce, wheat bix, fish fillets, wetsuits, anything. Unimaginable price impacts predicted by the Leader of the Opposition. We know he's not real good on forecasting the stock market. He's even worse at the CPI, because now the September quarter CPI figures are in, we can do a few price checks. It went to the Leader of the Opposition went to Sanitarium's wheat fix factory, for example, and claimed prices would be much, much higher. But the CPI figures show, in fact, breakfast cereal prices fell by 0.9 per cent in the first three months of the carbon price. The Leader of the Opposition he went to a dairy farm. He said milk would go through the roof. Milk would be unaffordable. The CPI figures for the September quarter show milk prices down 0.5 per cent for the quarter. Down. Senator Barnaby Joyce, that great soothsayer, a sage, a seer, he said a lamb roast. A lamb roast would be $100 after the carbon price came in. Lamb prices are down 2.3 per cent in the first quarter of the carbon price coming into effect. Lamb prices are down. Now, the opposition leader claimed motorists wouldn't be able to get in their car. Another mendacious claim. There's no carbon price on fuel. No carbon price on it at all. Totally mendacious. Speaker, it is time that the Liberal Party moved on from the DLP leadership and the Liberal Party became a Liberal Party once again. Give the member for North Sydney a go. Give the member for Wentworth a go. They're both starters, and there's a couple of roughies there. I like the member for Menzies for the job. He's put his hand up before. The but bring someone else on who can tell the expired. truth.